Pathos was the same as Jupiter in layout, except the board was dark blue rather than green. The first thing I noticed was that all the usual level icons had been replaced by a blue rock in some kind of orange honeycomb shape. There was one icon that had part of the jungle icon shape, but I didn't pay much thought to it. I checked on the other side of the board to see if there was a new monster, and there was. Instead of Hedora, it was Biolante. Though, that couldn't be right. Godzilla vs. Biolante didn't come out until 1989, and this game was made in 1988. Perhaps Toho put Biolante in the game to build excitement for the movie next year, but then changed their minds? I tried to rationalize the game's abnormalities any way I could, but this would prove to be futile. Pathos's map song was the first new song I heard in a game. Like most of the other songs, it was hard to describe, but I'll do my best. It started out slow and suspenseful, much slower than any other song in the game. But every 12 seconds or so, there would be a loud clashing sound, and the tempo changed. It was like the composer randomly played parts from five different songs with the same instruments. Anyhow, I moved Godzilla over to one of the many blue rock icons that had replaced the jungle icons, and started the level. The level resembled a blue mountain range with a blood-red planet in the sky, but there was something odd about the mountains. They had a shredded paper look to them. I thought at first maybe the glitch had affected it, but it looked far too intentional to be true. And then, I quickly noticed something else about this new level. There were no enemies at all. Not even any obstacles for that matter. I should also mention that this was where the point meter started to become glitched beyond comprehension, but it didn't bother me too much. I never keep up with game points anyway. So without having to focus on anything, I listened to the music while walking through the level unopposed. The music had a sorrowful feel to it. It would have been rather pleasant had I heard it in a normal game. The level went on for three screens, but with no obstacles around, and I finished it rather quickly. I tried other levels of the same type to see if any enemies appeared, but there were none. There was little else to be seen in the blue mountains, so I tried the other level type. I started one of the orange honeycomb levels, and my eyes were assaulted with a grotesque background of tumorous orange eyes. The sky was the same as the ground, so I assumed the game was indicating that this level takes place in a cave. The only enemies that were in this level were Matongo spawn, and as you could see, the little bastards were everywhere. The music certainly did not help at all with a mixture of screeching sounds and loud drum beats that sounded like a monster's theme in a horror film. After completing it, I tried to avoid playing through any more of these levels whenever I could. The map was short, so it was only a few minutes before I headed towards a rematch with Gizora and Mogira. But this time, to my very surprise, their sprites and attack patterns were vastly different. And so, I fought Mogira first. Mogira's replacement was a flying machine, with a slight resemblance to a Pascagoula alien. It was a bit like fighting Mothra, only it moved with a lot more grace. It attacked by spinning its front tentacle like a corkscrew, and it still had an eye beam, only except now it fired from the drill. But eventually, I defeated the opponent with ease. Now it was on to the next boss. This lanky aberration has replaced Gizora, and the new beast was far more of a challenge than ever before. It would run and jump at a fast pace, constantly swinging its arms around, making it hard to get close. And of course, it tried to pin me in a corner with much annoying resolve as ever. 
I defeated it using a combination of tail whips and a heat beam spamming. I defeated them, and I was going to fight Titanosaurus next. But all of a sudden, when I started the fight, Titanosaurus was nowhere to be seen. And the game simply went back to the map with the Titanosaurus piece now missing. But regardless, there was no one else to fight now but Biolante. And I eagerly started the battle. And to my surprise, Biolante started the fight in her rose form. She was immobile and used tentacles to keep me away from the main body, which took the most damage. And soon, as expected, she turned into her final form after taking enough damage. The sprite looked really damn good for 8-bit. The battle technique was the same, except now Biolanti could move, albeit slower than any other monster. Being hit by the tentacles did a lot more damage now, and Biolanti could do an acid spit, which I managed to avoid by japping in the screen cap. Not much more difficult to beat than Titanosaurus, it only took two rounds. Soon, when Biolanti was defeated, the music stopped when I returned to the map, and then there was a new icon that replaced the base. This icon wasn't there before I beat Biolanti. It resembled a red tribal mask, and I had a feeling of dread when I saw it. But since it replaced the base, it must be the only way to exit Pathos. And so, I moved Godzilla to the square, and I began the level. The map had took me in a hellish looking place with no sky, and a flickering fire in the background. The fire looked far more advanced than anything I've seen on the NES. There was music in the form of a slow, steady drum sound resembling a heartbeat. All the text and health on the top bar of the screen were gone. In their place was a single bit of text in the middle of the screen that said, Run. My feeling of dread intensified. I cautiously walked through the level, but like the blue mountains, there were no enemies around or any obstacles. I paced around for a minute before thinking, run? From what? The first time it hit me, I didn't even see it. I suddenly heard a noise outside my room and I turned back to see if something fell. But there was nothing. But then when I looked back, the screen was black and Godzilla was dying. I figured it may have been a glitch, but I wasn't going to play through the game without Godzilla. So I restarted the game and went on to the password screen. Have I ever mentioned how creepy the password screen music is? If you played the game before, you know what I mean. It doesn't at all fit the mood of the game. It's more like something from a horror game. Maybe they made it so that kids wouldn't cheat. I was quite annoyed at this point, because I thought I was going to have to fight all the monsters again. But that didn't happen. The game started me off right exactly for where I was before I started the red face level. And so, I tried to prepare myself and try it again and making sure that I would pay attention this time. I traversed forward as usual, thinking for what was going to happen. And that was when I heard a low bellowing sound. And then I saw it. This thing. Do you know that feeling your body has when you're feeling like you're in extreme danger? You start to recoil, 
and tense up as the adrenaline flows through your veins and your nerves start to feel very cold? That was the feeling I had when I took this screen cap. I haven't seen all the Godzilla movies, but I'm pretty damn sure this was it in any of them. It must be something the creators had made up. But honestly, what kind of sick fuck would put this in a children's game? And by sheer dumb luck, or perhaps the adrenaline boost, I managed to run fast enough to get away from it. It ran very fast, so much so that if you saw it, you were most certainly going to die. And when I say die, I mean your monster would get killed off instantly if this creature touches you. Once I had gone back to the map, I was so afraid that I was extremely tempted to just shut the game off and try to pretend this never happened. I couldn't believe what I had just seen. It couldn't have been real. And even if I wanted to continue, I still had to get Mothra through this chase level. But as I stayed inactive on the map screen for a few minutes, my fear was replaced by burning curiosity now. What the hell just happened? What was the rest of the game like before then? I only had to beat this level with Mothra, and then it was on to the next world. But when I moved Mothra to the red face, the game registered it as me beating the level. <sighs> I was quite relieved. And so, I tried to prepare myself for the next world. Trance.